In this tutorial, we will be creating this procedural pumpkin material in Blender. So we're going to start off by just modeling a very basic pumpkin object, and then we're going to be creating this procedural pumpkin material. And then we're also going to copy the node setup and create a different procedural material for the pumpkin stem. So we will actually have two different procedural materials by the end of the video. If you'd like to help support me and this channel and purchase the procedural material, then you can get that on my Gumroad store and my Patreon page. I'll have the links in the description. And if you'd like to purchase more of my procedural materials, then you can check out my Blender procedural material packs. So they're packs of 10 realistic procedural materials created with Blender's procedural nodes. And after you watch this tutorial, if you'd like to learn how to create any of my procedural materials, then you can also check out my Blender procedural material tutorial playlist with the links in the description. All right, so to start off, we are going to be modeling a very basic pumpkin object and then we'll be creating the procedural material on the objects. So I'm just going to select everything and I can press X and we are going to click on delete. So I'm going to press Shift A and let's go here to Mesh and I'm going to add a UV sphere for the pumpkin. And then just press the Tab key to go into edit mode. So I'm going to select the top vertex here. Make sure you are in the vertex select when you do that and just select the vertex here. Now I want to bring this vertex down but I want to bring the other vertices nearby down as well. So to do this I'm going to press the O key or you can also click right here and that's going to turn on the proportional editing. So I can now press G to grab and then hit Z to bring it down on the Z axis and then you can scroll with your mouse wheel and that's going to change the size of the proportional editing. So I'll just bring it down to about there, place it there, then I can press G to grab again and hit Z to bring it down on the Z axis and I'm just going to scroll my mouse and bring that in a little bit and place it there. And then I want to do that for the bottom as well so I'm going to go down here to the bottom, select this vertex and I'll press G to grab, hit Z to bring it up on the Z axis and I'm going to scroll my mouse wheel up and place it about there and then I can zoom in a bit more and press G to grab and hit Z to bring it up on the Z axis and then I'm going to scroll with my mouse wheel to make that smaller, make the proportional editing smaller and place it about there. And then I'm also going to hold down the Alt key and select one of these loops right here in the center and I'm going to press S to scale and then I can scroll my mouse wheel out so that it grabs more of that and I'm going to bring that up and then I can also press G and Z and kind of bring that up a little bit, something like that. And also if I hold down the Alt key and select that loop, I think I will scale this out just a little bit. And then I will tab to go back to object mode. And then in object mode, I'm going to press Control 2. And if you go right over here to the modifier properties, if you press Control 2, that's going to add the subdivision surface modifier with two levels. And then using the object context menu, I can shade the object smooth. And that's really it. So it's just a very simple pumpkin object and the rest of the detail and everything is going to be procedural. So the little creases in the pumpkin is going to be completely procedural and we're even going to use the displacements to kind of make the pumpkin a bit more lumpy and make those creases go in and out of the pumpkin. Now we do also need to model a very basic pumpkin stem so let's do that. So I'm going to press shift A and let's go here to mesh and I'm going to add a cylinder. And then right after you add the cylinder before you click away or move it around, right behind me you can see there's that add cylinder setting you can just click on the little arrow to open this up and then on the vertices here I'm just going to turn this to 12 and then I can click on the arrow there to close the add cylinder settings and then I can press the tab key to go into edit mode and I'm going to press s to scale and we actually have the proportional editing on so I'll hit the escape key I'm going to click right here to turn off the proportional editing and then I can press s to scale I'm going to scale this down in edit mode and then I can tab to go to object mode and I can press G and Z and we're going to bring this up, just kind of bring it up there. And then I can press the tab key to go back into edit mode and I can scale this down and make it even smaller. And then I'm going to hold down the alt key and just select that loop of vertices and I can press one on the numpad to go to front view. I'm also going to hold down the Z button and move my mouse into the wireframe view so I can see that in the wireframe. And then I can press G to grab. I'm going to bring this down on the Z axis, bring it down there and then I can scale this down a little bit. 
I think I'll scale it down a little bit more, and then I'm going to hold down the Alt key and select that loop of vertices. I can press G and Z, and we're going to bring that up a bit. So I can now press E to extrude, and then S to scale. We're going to bring this out quite a bit more, and then E to extrude, bring it down, and then S to scale, and then E to extrude again, and S to scale, and one more time E to extrude, bring that down, and S to scale. So this part is just going inside the pumpkin, and then the stem will come up here. So I'm now going to hold down the Alt key and just select that loop of vertices there, and I can press E to extrude this, bring that up, scale it down a bit, and then E to extrude, scale that down a bit more, and E to extrude and scale it down just a little bit more. And we'll extrude that up again. All right, and then I can extrude this up again. And this one, I want to kind of rotate it over just a little bit, so I'll hit R to rotate. And then I'll also press S to scale. We're gonna scale that up a little bit. And then I can press E to extrude again, kind of bring it over there and scale that up a little bit as well. So something like that, that's gonna be kind of the top of the stem. And then press the period on the numpad to zoom over to it. And I can hold down the Z button and move my mouse back to the solid view. And then I want to press I to inset. We're gonna inset this and bring it in. In a bit and I can press G to grab and just bring it down a little bit and then I again to inset and G to grab bring it down on the Z axis just a little bit and then also right here you can see that is a little sharp so I'm gonna hold down the alt key and just select that loop of vertices and I can press Control B that'll add a bevel and I can just bring that up and place that there I can also hold down the alt key select that loop of vertices right there and I can press Control B to add a bevel place that there and then also hold down the alt key select that loop of vertices there and I can press Control B to add a bevel and scale that up place it there and then I'm going to click right up here again or press the O key to turn on the proportional editing I'm gonna hold down the alt key select that middle loop right there and I want to press S to scale but then I need to scroll my mouse wheel to change the size of the proportional editing and I just want to make this a little bit thicker because it was a little bit thin I want to make it a little bit more stocky of a shape so something like that hold down the alt key and select that loop right there and I'm going to press S to scale and scroll my mouse wheel down, make it really small, and I'm just going to scale that in a little bit. I can also select this vertex right here and then hold down the shift key and select that vertex. And I can press G to grab and then I can scroll my mouse wheel up just to kind of make that end there so it kind of rotates up. So something like that is pretty good. All right, tab to go back to object mode, and then you can press Control 2, and that is going to add the subdivision surface modifier with two levels, and then using the object context menu, you can shade the object smooth. And I think I'll press G and Z and bring it down just a little bit into the pumpkin. And then also right here, this is just a tiny bit sharp. So I'm going to press the tab key to go into edit mode. I can hold down the alt key and select that loop right there. And I can scale it up a little bit and I need to bring down the proportional editing. Maybe bring this up on the Z axis. All right, there we go. So that now that is much more smooth. If I go back to object mode, that is a much smoother transition. All right, so there we have it. So there is the very basic pumpkin object. So all of the other details that we're going to be adding to the pumpkin will be using the procedural material and it will be using displacements in the material. Now, because we're going to be using the displacements in the node editor right here over on the render properties you do need to make sure you're using the cycles rendering engine because the EV rendering engine will not work with the displacements so you need to be using cycles for that and then also while we're over here on these settings I'm going to click on the film tab right here and I'm going to click on transparent and that way the background will be transparent while we are creating the procedural material totally optional you don't need to do this if you don't want to but I like to make the background transparent and then also if you go here to the color management I'm gonna set the view transform to filmic and I'm gonna set the look here to very high contrast and this is going to make the lighting and the colors more saturated and more contrasty and it'll look better so now let's set up the lighting so I'm first gonna be adding in an HDRI to get some nice realistic lighting and reflections so I'm gonna click right over here on the world properties and I'm also going to hold down the Z button and move my mouse up into the rendered view so I can see this in the rendered view and you can see the background is transparent because we turned on the transparent background. Now right over here in the world properties to add in the HDRI, 
you can click right here on the color, click on the yellow dot, and you can choose environment texture. And then the HDRI that I'm going to be using is a free HDRI from polyhaven.com. So if you'd like to download the same free HDRI that I'm using, I will have the link in the description. And then once you download the HDRI, you can just click on the open button to open up the HDRI. And the HDRI that I'll be using from polyhaven.com is going to be the Forest Cave. And I'm going to be downloading the 1K version and the HDR version. So again, link is in the description to that if you'd like to download it. So I'm going to click on it and then click on open image. And so you can see this is going to give us some very nice realistic lighting for the pumpkin. Now I do want to make it a little bit less bright, so on the strength here, I'm just going to turn this to like a 0.7, so the world is a little bit darker. So now I want to add some other lights shining on the pumpkin. So I'm going to be adding some rim lights on the back, and then another main light just kind of shining down on the pumpkin and lighting it up. So I'm going to press Shift A, and let's go here to a light, and I'm going to add the area light. And then I can press G to grab, move this over, press R to rotate, rotate this over, and we're just going to make this so it's pointing at the pumpkin. And this is going to be a rim light kind of on the back of the pumpkin. So I'll rotate that over just like that. And then if you click right over here on the object data properties on the light, you can change the shape here. So I'm going to change the shape to a rectangle. And then now that I've turned that to a rectangle, I can turn up the Y size. And this is going to make it longer up and down. I also might scale it up a little bit. And this is going to work a lot better for a rim light because it's going to cover more of the surface of the pumpkin. Now right here on the power, I'm going to turn up the power to 300. 300 is pretty good, so it's brighter. And then on the color here, I am going to make this just a very, very slight yellow color, but it's going to be mostly white. And then if you press 7 on the numpad to go to top view, you can duplicate this. So I'm going to press Shift D to duplicate, and then R to rotate, kind of rotate that over. And then I can also go over here to the side, and I'm going to rotate this over a bit. You can also double tap the R key to use the trackball rotation. And I'm just going to rotate this over here, kind of rotate it down a bit, and bring it up a little bit. We are going to be looking at the pumpkin from this perspective. And so I put the rim lights back here, so they're going to be lighting up kind of the back of the pumpkin and that's going to kind of bring it out of the background and you're going to be able to see the shape of the pumpkin better. Let's also add a camera. So I'm just going to press shift A and let's go right down here and add a camera. And then you can just move your view to wherever you want the camera to be. And I think I might do this in the solid view. So just move your perspective to wherever you want the camera to be. And then you can press control alt numpad zero and control alt numpad zero is going to bring the camera to where you are. And then if you want to move the camera around, you can press the G key with the camera selected. That's going to move the camera around and then you can can also hit G and then double tap the Z key and that's going to bring the camera forward and backwards and you can just kind of fit it to the pumpkin. Now I want this to be a square image because a pumpkin is much more of a square shape. I don't really want this extra space out here. So what you can do is go right over here to the output properties and you can change the resolution. So I'm going to be using a resolution of 2560 by 2560 and this is a very high quality image. Of course the higher resolution that it is the longer longer it'll take to render. So you could just use like 1920 by 1920 or 1080 by 1080 or really whatever resolution you want. And then I need to bring this in. So I'm going to press G to grab and then double tap the Z key and I'm going to bring this in a bit. Now with the camera still selected, if you go right over here to the object data properties, I do want to turn the focal length up a bit so that things look just a little bit more flat. So I'm going to turn the focal length to like 60. I think 60 looks a bit better. And then you can just place the camera pointed at the pumpkin and I'm going to hold down the Z button and move my mouse up into the rendered view so I can see how that is looking. So that's looking pretty good but I do just want to add one more main light shining down on the pumpkin so I'm going to press shift A and we're going to go here to light and I'm going to add another area light and then I'm going to rotate the area light over and kind of bring it up and I'm going to have it kind of more pointed down on the side or more the front of the pumpkin. So just kind of like that kind of rotate it down and then if you click over over here on the shape, I want to change this to disc. And this way it's going to be round. And then I can also scale it up a bit more. So something like that. And then I do want to make this much brighter. So let's turn the power here to like 800, 800 so it is much brighter. And then also here on the color, 
I am going to make this just a very slight yellow color, but it's going to be pretty white. All right, so there we go. So if I zoom in here, the pumpkin does look a bit blown out, but that's because it's just fully white right now. But once we add the materials, it'll look darker. And then also, I don't want Blender to render everything outside of the camera. I just want Blender to render the preview inside of the camera's view. So inside the camera view, I can press Control B, and then I can click and drag, and I'm going to drag a box around the camera. And this way, it'll just render what is inside the camera's view. And then we should have done this earlier, but let's make sure to save the Blender file. So I'm going to click on File, and I will click on Save As. And I'm just going to save this in a folder with my files as procedural pumpkin.blend, and I will click on Save As. All right, so that is it for the lighting. So I'm now going to click right over here on the Shading Workspace. And in the Shading Workspace, I have the 3D viewport right here. So I'm going to hold down the Z button and move my mouse up into the rendered view. And then I can press the zero on the numpad to go into the camera's view. And then I have the shader editor right over here. So let's first start by creating the pumpkin material. So I'm going to click on the pumpkin object. Let's click on a new here to make a new material and I can just rename the material. Now there is one setting that we need to turn on to get the displacements to work. We need to go right down here to the material properties and we have the procedural pumpkin right here in the material slot. So I need to scroll down here and I'm going to open up the settings tab. And then underneath the surface we have the displacement settings and I want to change it from bump only to displacement and bump and this way we're telling the material that it can use the displacements and then before we start creating the procedural material I am going to be using the node wrangler add-on to preview different nodes so if you don't have that enabled you can click on edit and you can go to the preferences and then over there in the add-ons tab you can search for the node wrangler and just check mark the node wrangler add-on and then one other thing I'm going to do, I'm going to click on this button right here, and this is going to get rid of the overlays, and that way we can't see all those little lights and the other things here, like the grid. So I'm just going to click on the show overlays to hide that. So I'm going to start off by creating the creases, which are going from the top of the pumpkin, going all the way down, and then going to the bottom. So to do this, I'm going to press Shift A. Let's go here to the search, and I'm going to search for the gradient texture, and let's stick this here. And then with the gradient texture selected I can press Control T and that is going to add the texture coordinate and mapping nodes and that's using the feature of the node wrangler add-on. Now we don't actually need the mapping nodes so I can click on the mapping node and I can press the X key to delete it and then I want to use the object coordinates so let's put the object here into the vector the gradient texture. Now to preview the gradient texture, I can control shift and select the gradient texture that is using the feature from the node wrangler and so we can control shift and select different nodes and that is going to preview the node on the object. So we're going to use this gradient texture to create the creases which are going down the pumpkin. Now right now the default is set to linear, so it just starts out as black and then goes to white. But I want to click on the linear and I instead want to change this to radial. So now that I've changed this to radial, you can see there is a line there going from the top down to the bottom. And over on this side it starts out as black and then as it goes around the pumpkin it gets lighter. Now I don't just want to have one dark line here, I want to have many of them. And I want them to be going around around the pumpkin. So to do this, I'm going to press Shift A. Let's go here to the search. And I'm going to search for a math node. And we're going to stick the math node after the gradient. And then I can click on the Add here. And I want to instead change this to a Multiply. And then I also need another math node. So I'm going to select the math node. And I'm going to press Shift D to duplicate it. And we're going to stick it after this math node. So we now have two of them. But then this second one here, I want to click on the Multiply. And I'm going to change this instead to the ping pong. So I can now take this first multiply and I can turn the value up. And you can see as I turn the multiply up, it's going to multiply the values. And so now we have more and more of those gradients and they're going all around the pumpkin. So I'm going to turn the multiply here to an 18. I think 18 looks pretty good. I think that is a good size for the pumpkin. Now something that's really important is that you don't use a value with any numbers here after the point. Because if I turn this up to just like an 18.05 or something like that, you can see that if I zoom in here, there is kind of that 
edge there. I can see that edge there where the gradients are all coming out of, and I don't want that. I don't want that sharp edge there. But if I turn this to a single value, like just 18, now you can see that that is matching and there isn't that crease there. So this is looking pretty good, but it doesn't actually look very organic or natural looking. And that is because these lines here are very, very smooth. But I want to give them more randomness. I want to give them a little bit of noise, and I want to have them kind of swiggling around a little bit. So to do this, we're going to add a noise texture, and we're going to use the noise texture to distort the lines a little bit. So I'm going to press Shift A. Let's go here to the search, and I'm going to search for the noise texture, and I'm just going to stick this right down here. And then I want to use the object coordinates. So let's pull out a wire from the object here, and we're going to put that into the vector. And then I can Control Shift and select the noise texture to preview it. Now on the scale here, I just want to change this to like a two, and then I do want this to be very detailed. So let's turn the detail all the way to the max of 15. So now I have a bunch of noise here and we want to use that to distort the lines. So to do this, we can press Shift A. I'm going to go here to the search and I'm going to search for the mix RGB node because we want to mix the noise texture in with the gradient. And I want to put the mix RGB in between the two math nodes. So stick it right there. And then I want to take the noise texture factor and I want to put this into color two. And then we want the multiply here to be going into color one. So I can now control shift and select the ping pong and we can see what that's looking like. So now it's looking much more organic and natural because it has that distortion there. Now, if I drag the factor, that's going to change how much it's being distorted. Now, when I do this, you can see that it's moving around the lines and I don't want it to be moving around the lines. So I'm going to click on the mix here and then I'm going to go down here and change this to the linear light. This way I can now drag the factor and it's going to distort the lines, but it's not actually going to move around the placement of the lines. It's just going to distort them. So now you can distort this as much as you want. I find that a factor value of 0.25 looks pretty good because it should be pretty subtle. The lines should be pretty smooth, but there should just be a little bit of noise and distortion along the lines. So that's pretty good. Now I want to keep my nodes very well organized. So I'm going to press B for for the box select and I'm just going to box select all these nodes here. I can now press Control J and Control J is going to join all of these selected nodes into this frame here. And then if I click on the frame, I can press F2 to add a label to the frame and I'm going to rename this to pumpkin creases. So now we can put the pumpkin creases into the displacement. So I'm going to bring the principled shader down and I'm going to take the ping pong here and I'm going to put that into the displacement. And then we want the principled shader to just be going into the surface. Now you can see when I do this, it is displacing the mesh, but there's some weird issues here. It's kind of going off to the side and it's way too strong. And this is because we need to turn this black and white data here from the ping pong into displacement data that the shader can actually use. So I'm going to press shift A. Let's go here to the search and I'm going to search for the displacement node. And we want to stick the displacement node here in between the ping pong and the displacement. And then I just want to drag this down and put it underneath the principled shader. And then to be able to preview this better, I'm just going to take the base color and I'm going to make this kind of a dark color just for now, just so that is a bit darker. Now you can see it's still not working correctly because now it's not really using the displacement at all. And this is because we actually need to take the ping pong and we need to put that into the height value of the displacement. And when I do that, now you can see it's working correctly. Now it's still way too strong, but it is working correctly. You can see there's all those bumps there going out on the sides, but if we make this less strong, it'll look much better. So let's take the scale here and let's turn this way down to like a 0.07. So a 0.07 and now it's starting to look like a pumpkin. And then I do want to keep my nodes very well organized. So I'm going to hold down the shift key and right click and drag over this wire and let go. And that's going to add the reroute here. And I can just bring the reroute down here and just like stick it there. So you don't need to use these. These are totally optional, but they're just a nice way to organize the nodes better and keep the wires very organized. Now, if I zoom in here to the pumpkin, you can see that the displacements are very sharp. Right here on the edge where it's popping out, it's very sharp and also it's very sharp there inside. But I instead just want the inside to be a little bit sharp but not super sharp. And then I, right here on the outside where it's popping out, I want that to be pretty smooth. So to fix this, I'm going to press Shift A. Let's go here to the search and I'm going to search for the RGB curves. And we're going to stick the RGB curves right here after the ping pong. And then we're going to stick it inside the frame here. And I can also bring this over and bring the pumpkin creases over just so that we have a bit more space there. So so I can now use the RGB curves to create the shape that I want for that part.
part there which is bumping out on the pumpkin. So what I'm going to do is click right here on the RGB curves and that's going to add a dot there and I'm going to bring this to the center. Then I'm going to click here again to add another dot and I'm going to bring this down to the bottom and you can start to see what's happening. So basically the shape here of the RGB curves is going to determine the shape of the pumpkin. If I press the 7 on the numpad to go to top view and zoom in here, you can see this shape right here on the side of the pumpkin is the same shape here of the RGB curves. It is a little bit less strong because we turned the strength down here or we turned the size down here on the displacement, but it is the same shape. And if I pull this one up here, you can see now it's popping out more, but if I drag this down, you can see it's not popping out quite as much. So I'm just going to bring this up here and I'm just going to make it a little bit taller than this first row here. You can see there's basically a grid in the RGB curves and I'm gonna bring this a little bit higher to about there. And so now that this is nice and round, it's gonna make the edges there where it's popping out more round. Now you can see right here in the creases, it's still very sharp and that's because it's very sharp here on the two edges. So what I'm gonna do is click and bring this dot up a little bit. And then over here on the other side, I wanna do the same thing. So bring this dot up a little bit. I'm now going to click right here to add another dot and I'm going to bring this dot over and bring it very close and this way it's not going to be quite as sharp and I'm also going to do the same thing here so click to add a dot bring this down and this way it's going to be less sharp. So now if you take a look at the model you can see it's very smooth and it almost has a wavy look to it. Now I do want to just bring this out a little bit because now it's a bit too wavy and it doesn't really have the shape of the pumpkin. So I'm going to click to add another dot here, bring this up a little bit, and we're just going to stick this here. So this is going to be very close to that corner there of the first square there in the grid. And then over here on the other side, I basically want to mirror it. So I want to do the same thing. So I'm going to click to add a dot there and I'm going to bring this one over right there. And again, put it almost right there in the corner there of that grid, but just a little bit lower. And because we've done that, you can now see that where the creases are going in, they are sharp, but they're not super sharp. And then kind of here where it's popping out, it is very smooth. And then I do just want to make this a little bit more flat. So I'm going to click to add a dot here, bring this up a little bit, and then I can click to add a dot here and bring this up a little bit. So there we go, now that has a much more shape of a pumpkin. And if you want to, you can continue to play around with this. So I might just kind of fiddle around with these, maybe bring that down a little bit. Something like that is pretty good. You can see like if I zoom in there really close and let that load up, there is kind of a little line there which is popping out. So I'm just gonna bring this up just a tiny little bit and just play around with this. So I'm just gonna bring that up a little bit more. And there we go, so now you can see the crease is much more subtle. It's still there, but it's not quite as sharp and that is really starting to look like a pumpkin already. Now before filming this tutorial, I looked at a lot of reference images of pumpkins because I did want it to look very realistic. And actually as I'm filming this video, it's September of 2022, so the season of fall is just around the corner and we actually have some pumpkins growing in our backyard. So I went out to our backyard and I took a look at the pumpkins close up and I felt the surface and I took some pictures really close up and that was very helpful to take a look at all the details of the pumpkin. So if you take a look at some pumpkins, then you'll notice that they not only have these big creases, but they also have some smaller creases kind of randomly around. And so I actually want to duplicate this node setup and make some smaller, more subtle creases. So to do this, I'm going to press B for the box select, and I'm just going to box select all the nodes here which are in the frame and also the frame. I'm now going to press Control Shift D. So Control Shift D is going to duplicate the nodes, but it's going to keep the wires plugged up, and this way the gradient and the noise is still plugged up to the object texture coordinates. And then I'm just going to Control Shift and select the bottom RGB curves here from the one we duplicated. Now if I click on the frame here, I want to rename this, so I'm going to press F2 to change the label, and I'm going to rename this to Pumpkin Smaller Creases. So Pumpkin Smaller Creases. Now the node setup is pretty much going to be exactly the same, except I'm going to change this value here. So I'm going to turn the value up to a value of 40. I think 40 is pretty good. So now we have some smaller creases, and then I can control shift and select this one here, and we have some bigger creases. So I now want to mix these two together, but I mostly want to preview the pumpkin creases, and the smaller creases are going to be more subtle and less visible. So I'm going to select this RGB curves here, hold down the shift key, and select 
select the other RGB curves. And I can now press Control 0. And that is going to add a mix RGB, and it brought it way over here. So I'm just going to bring this back, and then I can click on the arrow here to open up the mix RGB. Let's also box select these nodes, and then I'm going to bring them over so I have a bit more space and bring the mix RGB back here. And then just make sure you Control, Shift, and select the mix RGB to preview it. Now the creases in the textures are darker values. You can see the creases are black. So right here on the mix here, I want to click on this and I want to change this to darken. And this way it's just going to add the dark values. And then I actually want to switch these so the top RGB curves is going to go into color 1 and then the other RGB curves will go into color 2. Now the factor is going to add the dark values. So you can see if I turn the factor all the way to zero, it's just using the pumpkin creases, but then as I turn the factor up, it's going to use more and more of the smaller creases. Now I don't want to turn it all the way up to one because that way it's going to be much more strong. I want the smaller creases to be more subtle. So I'm going to turn the factor value to a 0.25. That way by turning it to a 0.25, it's only going to use a quarter amount of the small creases. So if I zoom in here, you can definitely see those small creases, but they are more subtle and these other bigger creases are much darker and so they're going to be a lot stronger. And then I can control shift and select the principal shader and you can now see we have some other smaller creases here and there, but they are more subtle. Now if you take a look at the pumpkin skin really close up, you will see some little lighter colored dots. And so I want to add a texture up here for those little dots and we're going to add that into the material. So I'm going to press shift A. Let's go here to the search and I'm going to search for the Voronoi texture and let's drop the Voronoi texture up here. And then I can control shift and select the Voronoi to preview it. Now I want to use the object coordinates. So I'm going to take the texture coordinate here, take the object and we're going to put that into the vector of the Voronoi. And by using the object coordinates, it's going to place the texture on the object more evenly. So we can use the Voronoi texture to create all those little dots. Now I'm going to take the scale here on the Voronoi and I'm going to turn this up to a really big value of like 150. And this way we have just a bunch of little dots there. And then I actually want to flip these colors. So I'm going to press shift A. Let's go here to the search and I'm going to search for a color ramp and let's put the color ramp after the Voronoi texture. And then I want to click on the drop down arrow here on the color ramp and I'm going to click on flip color ramp. And this way the dots are now going to be white and everything else is going to be black. And then to make the dots smaller, I can drag the black tab out and that's going to make it more contrasty and I'll just bring it to about there. So now we have a bunch of little dots. And then I do want to make the dots a darker color, so if I click on the white tab right here, I can click on the color, and I'm just going to make this kind of a light gray color. And if you'd like to use the same exact color that I'm using for the light gray color, you can click over on the hex value, and you can punch in BF, BF, BF. So that's the color that I'll be using. Now if I zoom up very closely to these dots, you can see these dots aren't very natural or organic looking. They are very smooth and round. And so I want to make them look more organic and natural. So to do this, I'm going to add a noise texture into the Voronoi vector. And that way the noise texture will distort the placement of the Voronoi. So I'm going to press Shift A. Let's go here to the search. And I'm going to search for a noise texture. And let's stick this up here. And then just like with all the other textures, I want the object to be going into the vector of the noise texture. And then I can control shift and select the noise texture to preview it. So I want to turn the scale here on the noise texture to 10. And then I also want it to be very detailed. So let's turn the detail all the way to the max of 15. And then I do just want to give it a little bit more roughness. So let's turn the roughness to a 0.6. So I now want the noise texture to distort the Voronoi. So to do this, I'm going to put the factor into the Voronoi texture. And then I can control shift and select the color ramp. Now if I zoom in here, you can see that's distorting it way too much, so we can't see the dots at all. So we want the noise texture to be less strong, so it's going to affect the Voronoi less. So I'm going to press Shift A, let's go here to the search, and I'm going to search for the Mix RGB, and we want to put this in between the noise texture and the Voronoi. Now the noise texture factor is going to be going into color 2, and then we want to take the object coordinates and we're going to put that into color 1. 
So now if I change the factor, that's going to change how much it's using. So if I turn the factor all the way to zero, it's completely using the texture coordinate. But if I turn the factor all the way up to one, it's completely using the noise texture. Now you can see as I move this around, it's also moving the texture around. So to make it not move the texture around, I can click on the mix here and I can change this to the linear light. And then I can just drag the factor now, and you can see it's just changing the distortion, but it's not actually changing the placement of it. Now, I mostly just want the Vorno texture to retain its shape. I just want the noise texture to distort it a little bit. So I'm going to turn the factor to a 0 0.025, just a 0 0.025. And now if I zoom in here, you can see the Voronoi circles are definitely being distorted. They have lots of noise, but it is very subtle, and they're mostly retaining their original shape. Now I want to keep my nodes very well organized, so I'm going to press B for the box select, and I'm just going to box select all these nodes here, and I can press Control J, that's going to join them all together into a frame, I think I'll bring them in a little bit, and then if I click on the frame, I can press F2 to add a label, and I'm just going to rename this to dots texture. All right, so we now have the dots texture, we have the pumpkin creases which are being combined, and so I want to put these into the principled shader to finish off the material. So just control shift and select the principled shader, and then I want the darken here from the creases to be going into the base color. Now it's just white and black right now, but I want to change the colors to make it look more like a pumpkin. So let's press shift A, I'm going to go here to the search, and I'm going to search for a color ramp node, and let's put this in between the darken and the base color. And then we can change these colors and that'll change the colors for the pumpkin. So I'm first going to click on the black tab here and this black tab is going to be the color of the creases. So I'm going to make this quite a bit brighter and then I'm going to make this kind of a dark brownish orangey color. And if you'd like to use the same exact color that I'm using over here on the hex value, you can punch in a hex value of CC 671C. And then if I click on the white tab, I want to make this a similar color. So I'm going to make this a bright color and then make it kind of a orangey yellowy color. So something like that. And the hex value that I'm going to be using for this brighter orange color is going to be a hex value of F27A26. Now if I control shift and select the color ramp to preview it, you can see it's not actually very sharp. It is pretty subtle. So I'm going to click on this tab and I'm going to drag drag it out and this way it's going to make the lines more sharp. So I'm going to drag this out pretty close kind of over here and now you can see that's much sharper so most of the pumpkin is that lighter orange but then the darker orange is going to be there in the creases. And then I can control shift and select the principal shader. Now I want to put this into the roughness, so let's take the dark in here, pull out a wire from the color, and we're going to stick this into the roughness. So this way some parts are going to be more rough, whereas other parts are going to be more shiny. Now I want more control over this because the pumpkin looks kind of wet right now because it's so reflective. So to have more control over this, I can click on the color ramp, and I'm going to press Shift D to duplicate it, and let's stick it right here before the roughness. And then I want to reset the color ramp, so with the color ramp selected, you can hit the backspace and that is going to reset the color ramp. So I can now click on the black tab and I'm going to click on the color and I'm going to make this brighter. And you can see as I make it brighter, the pumpkin is going to be more rough. So I just want to make this kind of a gray color, something like that. And if you want to use the same exact color that I'm using for this first gray color, right here on the hex value, you can punch in 9A, 9A, 9A. And then I do want to make this white tab a little bit darker, so I'm going to click on the white tab here, click on the color, and I'm going to make this a little bit darker. And the hex value that I'll be using for this lighter gray color is going to be a hex value of BF, BF, BF. So now if I kind of look here on the side of the pumpkin to see the reflections, it is definitely reflecting reflective, and it should be somewhat reflective because the surface is a little bit shiny, but it shouldn't be too shiny. So I think something like that is pretty good. All right, now we still haven't added the dots texture, so let's do that. So I'm going to bring the color ramp back here, and then I want to mix the color with the dots. So to do this, I can select the color ramp here from the dots texture. I can hold down the shift key and select the color ramp here, which is making the orange colors. And I can now press control zero, and that is going to add the mix RGB. And I want to stick the mix RGB right here in front of the base color and open it up. And you can see that I already plugged the mix here into the color. And then I can control shift and select the mix to preview it. Now this color ramp here with the dots texture, this is just black and white.
white values. So I'm actually going to put this color ramp here into the factor of the mix. And then I'm going to take the orange color ramp and I'm going to put that into color one. So now if you control shift and select the mix, you can see that those little dots there are being added on top of the orange color ramp colors. Now color two here is going to be the color of those dots. So if I click on color two, I want to make this a bright color and I'm going to make this kind of a yellowy orangey color. And the hex value that I'll be using for this color is going to be a hex value of FF8815. So it is very subtle, but if you zoom in closely, you can definitely see it. And it should be pretty subtle, but you should be able to see it just a little bit. So that's just going to add a really nice texture there to the pumpkin. So I can now control shift and select the principled shader to preview that. And that is really starting to look like a pumpkin. Now we haven't added any data into the normal, and so I do want to add some data into the normal to give it some bump. So I'm first going to add the dots texture into the bump. So let's pull out a wire here from the color here from the dots texture, and we're going to bring this down, and I'm going to put this here into the normal. Now when I do that, you can see there's some weird shading issues. It looks really weird, and that's because this here is color data, but then this over here is normal data. So we need a node in here to convert this data to normal data. So I'm going to press Shift A. Let's go here to the search, and I'm going to search for the bump node, and we're going to stick the bump node right here before the normal. So then we want this color ramp here to actually be going into the height the value of the bump and that way the bump will actually convert it to normal data. Now if you zoom in closely you can see the bumps are actually popping out and I want them to instead be going back in. So I can click on the invert button and now they look like they're going back in. Now they're way too strong so I want to make them more subtle. So let's take the strength here and I'm going to turn the strength to a 0.07. So a 0.07 and that way the bump is still definitely there. You can see it in the reflections there, but it is pretty subtle. And then I also want this darken here to be going into the bump, and this darken is the creases. So by putting this into the bump, the creases will just be a little bit more bumpy. So I can click on this bump node here. I can press Shift D to duplicate it, and let's stick it down here. Now the normal can go into the normal, and this way we can mix multiple bump maps together. So then right here on this bump, we can take the darken. Let's pull out a wire here from the color, and I can put this into the height value of the next bump. And then I want to click on the invert here to turn the invert off. Now I do want to make this bump just a little bit more strong. So let's turn the strength value to just like a 0.1 so it's a little bit stronger. So I can control shift and select this bump. You can see what that's doing. So it's adding some bump there. Now I do just want to add one more layer of bump and that's going to be some noise all over the surface. So I'm going to click on this bump here and I can press shift D to duplicate it. Let's drop it down here. And then again, the normal can go into the normal. So we're mixing the bump maps together so we now have this height value that we can add data into. So we already have a noise texture and that is this noise texture here from the pumpkin creases. So I can pull out a wire from the noise texture factor and I'm going to stick this into the height of this last bump here. And then I do want to make this more subtle so let's just turn the strength to a 0.07. So I can now control shift and select the principal shader to preview the material. All right, now I do want to give the pumpkin material just a tiny little bit of subsurface scattering to make it look a little bit more organic. So right here on the principal shader, we have this subsurface value, and I'm just going to turn this to a very small value of 0 0.005. And then right here on the subsurface color, I'm going to click on this, and I'm going to make this kind of a yellowy orangish color. And the hex value that I'll be using for the subsurface color is going to be a hex value of E7, 9a00. All right, so the material is almost finished, but I do want to add a noise texture into the displacement. And why I want to do this is because I want to make the pumpkin look a little bit lumpy. Because if you look at pumpkin reference images or pumpkins in real life, you'll notice that not every pumpkin is the same. Some pumpkins are a little bit smaller and other pumpkins are a little bit bigger. And then pumpkins are also a little bit lumpy. So I'm going to add a noise texture into the displacement to make the pumpkin more lumpy and random. So I'm going to box select the displacement and the reroute and I'm going to bring this down so there's more space. So I'm now going to press shift A. Let's go here to the search and I'm going to search for the noise texture and let's stick the noise texture right here. And then I can control shift and select it to preview it. Now I want to use the object coordinates so let's pull out a wire here from the object from the texture 
coordinate. We're going to bring this over. You can push your mouse into the corner of the screen and that's going to move it down. And I'm going to stick it here into the vector of the noise texture. Now you can see that this wire here is overlapping. So to fix this, I'm going to hold down the shift key and right click and drag to add a reroute. And I'm going to bring this down here. Then I can hold down the shift key, right click and drag again to add another reroute. And let's bring this reroute up here. So I'm going to stick it here and then bring this over. And then I can hold down the shift key and right click and drag again to make one more reroute. And I'm just going to bring this over. So now it goes down and then over and then down. So just make sure you control shift and select the noise texture to preview it. Now I don't want this noise texture to be very detailed. I just want it to have some little lumps. So some parts are going to be darker and some parts are going to be lighter. So I'm going to turn the scale to one and then I'm going to leave everything else at the default. So now you can see we just have some parts are which are a bit darker and other parts which are a bit lighter. Now I want to make this more contrasty because it is pretty gray. So I'm going to press shift A. Let's go here to the search and I'm going to search for a color ramp and let's stick the color ramp here after the noise texture. And then I can start to drag these together and that's going to make it more contrasty. So I'll bring the white tab over here and then I'll bring the black tab to about there. So now you can see that is more contrasty. So I now want to mix this into the displacement. So I'm going to press shift A. Let's go here to the search and I'm going to search for a mix RGB and let's put the mix RGB after the displacement. So now this darken here is going to go into the mix and then we're also going to mix that in with the noise texture. So let's put the color here from the color ramp into color one and then this darken here which is joining together the creases that darken is going to go into color two. Now I just want to add the dark values, so let's click on the mix here and I can change this to darken. And then I can control shift and select the darken to preview it, and I can drag the factor, and you can see if I turn it all the way to zero, it's just using the color ramp here, so it's just adding those lumpy bits from the noise texture, but then as I drag up the factor, it's going to use more and more of the creases. So I find that a value of 0.3 looks pretty good. But now if I look here on the top of the pumpkin, it is definitely more lumpy. And you can also, of course, drag around these color ramp values to make that more or less contrasty. And then one more thing that you can do, I'm just going to box select these nodes and bring them out a little bit. If you want to make the lumps a bit stronger, you can press Shift A, you can go here to the search, and you can search for a math node. And I'm going to stick the math node right here after the color ramp. Now right here on the add, I can click on this and I'm going to change this to a multiply. It's under functions multiply. So the math node is going to multiply the color ramps black and white values. So if I take the value here and turn it up, it's going to make it much stronger. So if I turn this way up, now you can see we have a very lumpy pumpkin. I don't want it to be that lumpy though, but I think I will turn this to like a 1.2, just a 1.2. So it's a little bit more bumpy and lumpy. And then you could also bring this factor value up a little bit if you wanted to. So I think I might just turn this up to like a 0.4 so you can see those creases a little bit better. And then I can control shift and select the principled shader to preview the final material. All right, so that is it. That is the procedural pumpkin material. Now to make the procedural stem material, we can actually just duplicate this material and add it to the stem and then change it a bit because the stem material is somewhat similar to the pumpkin. So I'm just going to select the stem object and let's click right here on the drop down and I'm going to add the procedural pumpkin material. Now I want to duplicate this so it is a separate material. So I'm going to click on this button right here and it looks like two pieces of paper and that's going to to duplicate it. So it now says procedural pumpkin.001. So now if I click between these, they are two different materials, but they have the same information. But now I can just change the material for the stem and it won't affect the pumpkin. So I'm just going to rename this to procedural pumpkin stem. And then also right here in the 3D space, I don't really need to preview the pumpkin. So what I'm going to do is just press control B in the camera view, and I can just drag a box around the stem and let go. And this way the preview times will be faster because it's only going to render whatever was in that boundary. Now we don't actually need the pumpkin smaller creases, so I can just delete this. But instead of deleting this, I'm just going to delete some of the nodes in here, and then we are still going to use the gradient texture for another purpose. So I'm going to click on this mix RGB and I can press control X. And if you press control X, that will delete the node, but keep the wire plugged up. Now we don't need the ping pong, so I can select that and press control X, the linear light control X and the multiply control X 
and the noise texture control X. So now we just have the gradient texture. Now, if I click here on the frame, I can press F2 to rename the label and I'm going to rename this to top cap. So just rename it to top cap. If I zoom in here really closely, you can see that the stem there is being displaced on the top. But when pumpkins are cut off from the stem, the stem part which is cut off is going to be pretty flat. So I'm going to use this gradient texture as a mask to get rid of the displacements there on the top. So that's why I'm renaming this to top cap. And then if I control shift and select the gradient texture, I can preview it and you can see it's still set to radial, but I don't want this to be set to radial. I'm going to click on this and I'm going to instead just change this to the linear. So now we just have a gradient going from black to white. Now I don't want it to be going side to side because you can see it's black over here and white over here. So I want to rotate the gradient texture over. So I'm going to press shift A. Let's go to the search and I'm going to search for the mapping node. Now we're going to stick the mapping node here in the wire going from the texture coordinate to the gradient and then I can drop it inside the frame and bring it over. So I can now use the mapping node to rotate the gradient. So if I change the Y rotation, that's going to rotate the gradient over. So I'm going to rotate it by 90 degrees and that way now it's going to be going up and down. So you can see it's black down here and white up here. Now I want to change the colors of the gradient because I just want the gradient to be black on the top and then it's going to be white down here. So to do this, I'm going to press shift A. Let's go here to the search and I'm going to search for the color ramp and let's stick the color ramp right here in the frame and then I can control shift and select it to preview it. And then I want to take the gradient texture color and let's put that into the color ramp factor. And then I just want to take this color right here and we're going to replace that here in the darken. So just right there. And then just make sure you control shift and select the color ramp to preview it. So I can now drag around these colors and that's going to change the gradient. So I'm actually going to flip these values. So I'm going to drag the white tab over to about here and then drag the black tab over here and just drag around the black tab and the white tab until the top of the stem is black. So you can see the top of the stem is black and the rest of it is white. And so we're going to use this as a mask to get rid of the crease displacement where it is black. So where it is white, you'll be able to see the creases, but then where it is black, the creases will disappear. So this color ramp here from the top cap is going into the darken. So I'm going to control shift and select the darken to preview it. Now, if I drag around the factor value, it's just going to add the dark values. And because the color ramp here has the black on the top, if I turn the factor all the way up to one, you can see now that is fully black. And so the creases isn't actually affecting the top of the stem. So now that you can see that actually taking effect, you can go back to the color ramp and you can kind of drag this around and just make it so that the very tip is dark. So something like that. Now there are actually way too many creases on the pumpkin stem. So if you go to the pumpkin creases and go here to the multiply, I'm just going to turn the value to like 10 and that way there's going to be much less creases and that looks a lot better. Now I do want to change the RGB curves here because I don't want it to have this shape. So if you select the RGB curves, you can press the backspace and that is going to reset the RGB curves. So I can now just change this to get the shape that I want for the creases. So I'm first going to click here to add a dot and I'm going to stick this dot right here in the middle and just bring it down a little bit. Then I can click right here where this dot is and I'm going to drag this down and put that there. And remember, just like we did for the pumpkin material, this shape here is going to determine the shape of the creases. So that is the shape that I want, I just want to come up and then go back down. So let's control shift and select the principled shader again to preview that. Now you can see there are some problems with the displacement, but we'll fix that later. But right now I want to change the colors. So let's click here on this color ramp, this orange color ramp, and this is determining the colors. And then I can hit the backspace to reset the color ramp. Now on this color ramp, I want to click on the black tab and I want to bring it out a little bit. And then I want to click on the color here and I want to make this kind of a grayish greenish color for the stem of the pumpkin. And if you'd like to use the same exact color that I'm using, you can go to the hex value and you can punch in 403F1A. And then let's click on the white tab right here and I'm going to click on this color and I'm going to make this kind of a tannish yellowy orange color and a little bit darker. And the hex value that I'll be using for this tannish color is going to be B3 
4B. Now right up here on the dots texture, I do want to have some dots because on the pumpkin stem there are some little spikes and from far away they just look like some little light colored dots but I don't want to use the noise texture in here because they're going to be really small and you're not really even going to be able to see the detail in there so I'm going to click on this noise texture here I can press X to delete it I'm also going to click on the linear light here and then I can press Control X to delete that and that way the wire here is still going to be plugged up and let's bring the Voronoi texture back a bit and then I can Control shift and select the color ramp to preview it now these dots are way too small, so on the Voronoi texture scale, I'm just going to turn this to like a 75, so the dots are bigger. But then I want to make it more contrasty, so I'm going to click on the black tab here on the color ramp, and I'm going to drag this over so it is more contrasty. And then I can click on the light gray tab, click on the color, and I want to make this fully white. So now we just have some little dots there. So I can now control shift and select the mix to preview how that is looking. So right now all those little dots are the color of color two and color two is orange. But I don't want it to be orange, I want it to be kind of a light tan color. So I can click on orange two and I'm gonna make this kind of a tan color and a bit brighter. And the hex value that I'll be using for color two for those white colored dots is going to be a hex value of BC, a37F. All right, so let's control shift and select the principled shader to preview how that's looking. Now I do want to change the subsurface scattering a bit. So on the subsurface right here, I'm going to turn this to a 0 0.01. So we're going to add more subsurface. And then I do want to make the subsurface color a little bit lighter. So I'm going to make that a bit brighter and maybe just a little bit less saturated. And to use the same subsurface color that I'm using over here on the hex value, you can punch in E7, A1, 2, 1. Now if I zoom up closely here, I don't really like how the subsurface is looking because it is very red. So if I click here on the subsurface radius, I'm gonna click and then drag down and then let go and that'll change all the values at the same time. And I'm just gonna type one and then enter. So now that I've done that, you can see the subsurface color is a much brighter and it's also more of a greenish color. And I think that does look a lot better for the pumpkin stem. So now let's change the displacements because right now the pumpkin stem is very smooth and there's also a weird problem there with the displacements where it's kind of overlapping itself. So I don't need the multiply right here. So I can click on the multiply and I can press control X to delete it. And then I'm going to take these two values here and I'm actually going to flip them. And then I don't want this to be set to darken here on this mix RGB. So I'm going to click on this and I'm going to change this instead to lighten. So it's right here, change this to the lighten and then I can control shift and select it to preview it. So basically what we are doing is we are mixing the dark in here with this noise texture. And the noise texture is gonna add a bunch of noise and make it kind of all bumpy and random. Now I can't really see the noise texture very well and that's because it's so big. So let's take the noise texture scale and I'm gonna turn this to like an eight and now you can see it's much more bumpy. And I can actually just control shift and select the principled shader to preview how that's looking. So on the noise texture scale here, I'm gonna change this to 8 and then I'm going to turn the detail all the way to the max which is 15 so it has a lot more detail and then on this color ramp here I actually want to drag this back a bit so it's not quite as saturated so I can bring that back now I want to add all of the noise texture. So on the light in here, on the factor, I'm gonna turn this all the way up to one. And you can see as I turn this up, it's using more and more of that noise texture. Now, if I look at those creases, they're not actually very detailed. The noise is pretty detailed, but the creases really aren't that detailed. So let's go right back over here to the pumpkin creases. And I want to change this noise texture here to make it more detailed. So on the pumpkin creases noise texture, let's turn the scale up to like 10 and that way there's going to be more detail. And then I want to turn up the linear light here all the way up to one because as I turn this up it's going to use more and more of the noise texture. So I'm going to turn that all the way up to one and now you can see those creases are much more distorted and that looks a lot better. So just control shift and select the principled shader again to preview the final material. Now I do just want to play around with the displacements a little bit because if I zoom up closely here you can see there is some geometry which is overlapping. So on the mid level here I'm going to 
gonna turn this down to like 8.3 and now that's gonna pop out more it's also gonna make it look thicker which looks better you can see if I turn the mid level down you can see it's kind of overlapping here it's kind of going through itself but if I turn the mid level to 0.3 now there isn't any overlapping and then I do also want to turn the displacement scale down a bit so on the scale here I can turn this to a point 053 just a point 053 and now it's not quite as strong so I can just zoom out here make this a bit smaller and then I can press control B to box select this in the camera view and that's going to preview everything that the camera can see so there we have it so we now have the procedural pumpkin material and the procedural pumpkin stem material so I'll just give this a final render now so thank you so much for watching this tutorial. I hope you found it helpful and I hope you enjoyed it. And if you'd like to purchase the finished tutorial files, then you can do that over on my Gumroad store and my Patreon page. I'll have the links in the description. And my Gumroad store and Patreon page are really great ways to help support me and this channel. And some great ways to help support the channel here on YouTube is by checking out the YouTube memberships by clicking on the join button right down there next to the subscribe button. And if you enjoyed this video and you'd like to give me a little tip, you can also use the super thanks feature here on YouTube, and I do appreciate your support. And if you'd like to purchase more of my procedural materials, you can also check out my Blender procedural material packs. And if you'd like to learn how to create any of my procedural materials, then you can check out my Blender procedural material tutorial playlist on YouTube with the links in the description. But I hope you enjoyed this tutorial, and thank you for watching.